Well, for more on the state of Brazil's economy, I spoke to Monica de Bol from the Peterson Institute for International Economics. I began by asking her about Brazil's ongoing financial crisis. The country is facing what can only be called the worst recession it has ever faced. Um, this is the second year that the economy is contracting in a row. It contracted already almost 4% in, in 2015, so that was a fall in GDP of practically 4%. Um, this year it was initially estimated that it would have been another drop of about the same magnitude as last year, but recently um, things seem to have improved a bit. And now, you know, the expectation is that it will fall closer to 3 rather than 4 but as you can see, it's a very, very dramatic situation, rising unemployment, you know, a lot of dislocation in labor markets. So it's very, very serious. And you mentioned unemployment. Would you say that's one of the biggest headwinds in Brazil right now? Certainly it is. I mean, there are about 11.6 million people who are currently unemployed in Brazil. And the situation is not getting any better because since the country's still in recession, their layoffs are still happening. Um, so the labor markets are way off from a, from a recovery. So certainly that is the biggest headwind. And are there any other challenges you think would rank a close second or third going in? Well, then you have the myriad of issues. The corruption probe, the political crisis, the, the health crisis related to the Zika epidemic and things of that sort. All of the questions surrounding the Olympic Games and, you know, whether it's going to be secure enough, whether it's going to be safe enough, whether, you know, the athletes are going to have the proper conditions. All of these things are being played out, you know, on the world stage because basically Brazil is, is on the spotlight right now. And in some ways, these problems are getting the same weight. And perhaps that's not exactly what should be happening. So let's look at the ones that, that are the priority. What would you say are the most urgent reforms that are needed at the moment? And under Michel Temer, does he have the tools to work on them? Well, that's a very good question. Brazil's most urgent problem is fiscal. So Brazil needs to get its fiscal house in order in some way. Um, the government has proposed a number of reforms for doing this. They're good reforms. On paper, they sound very nicely. They're exactly what the country needs. So these are things like social security reform, um, labor reform, other types of reforms that are needed to get a number of things in place. However, the country is undergoing a severe political crisis as we speak. There is going to be an impeachment trial that's taking place at the very end of this month. It's now uh, scheduled to take place at the very end of August um, against President Rousseff. Very likely she will be impeached and removed from office for good. And people seem to think that after that, you know, suddenly chips will fall into place and the political scenario is going to improve. That's not likely. So some of these reforms are really unlikely to pass Congress and hence problems will not be resolved anytime soon. So with that being said, even looking, looking beyond the Olympics, obviously, and, and with, um, with what's happening with Rousseff, what does that mean then in terms of the investment picture? Is there any certainty that investors can see, can look at Brazil and be like, yes, this is a good time to invest, or are they taking more of a wait and see approach? Well, the local investors, local companies, for example, because they have been hit so hard by the recession, because they're in the midst of all of this uncertainty and this, you know, very turbulent climate, they're on the sidelines for sure. Um, for foreign investors, the country has, be has become more attractive in some ways. I mean, there is clearly, even though there is a political crisis, there is an economic team in place that has a very clear direction. Whether or not they'll be able to implement the policies depends on the political system. But there's a plan where before there was none. So that makes it a bit more attractive for investors. Also, the assets and everything else has become very cheap in Brazil because the exchange rate has devalued, you know, stock markets. Now they're rallying, but before they were falling. And they're now rallying, actually, because a lot of foreign investors are coming in and buying Brazilian assets. Um, the current government has a plan to privatize a number of public sector companies and other assets, and this is an opportunity for foreign investors to come in. So certainly this is a time when, you know, there's a crisis, there's turbulence, there's turmoil, but there's also opportunity, and foreign investors are much better placed than local ones to um, basically benefit from that right now.